this one to come. Check it. It's okay. Today we're gonna talk about the Hochiki FM200 panel. By this system, well, we are going to use the gas called the Novec. So, um, before we start, we need to know whatever that it means at any point. Now, the most parts that we are going to use for this system is the NAC1, and we're gonna use the NAC2, the Zone 1, Zone 2, we're going to use the NAC3, the first stage alarm for the interfaces, the second stage. We are going to use the manual release, the abort switch. Then we move on to the extinguishing and also the low pressure switch. And this part is the trouble relay. But to shut down the system, like let's say we have a damper or interface, we are going to control it using the fire alarm system. If not, like we could just incorporate it here or just introduce another relay, then we can just do it here. This is the manual release also, and all these has settings of which you can just set it to the times of which you need. Let's say you need five seconds for it to release whenever you press, or you need one minute, it's all in the settings of which in the next video I'm going to talk about how to program systems like this. And this system is Oho Chiki, but it comes in different, different. It's just the same thing with the same principles, but it's just the brand name that is a bit different most of the times. Um, so now, in case you want to activate, you start activating the system. The zone one, we have zone one and zone two. Zone one and zone two. Zone one and zone two are the detectors of which we will activate to cause the cross zoning. What do I mean when I say cross zoning? Cross zoning means whenever you activate any of the zones, either zone one or zone two, it will just start with the first stage. Then the subsequent one will be the other part. That is the zone one also or zone two. So if you activate zone one first, the next one has to be zone two. If you activate zone two first, the next one has to be zone one. And with this one, the first stage, you activate the detector inside and you're going to get the bell ringing. So the bell is going to be installed. The bell is in NAC1. So the NAC1 is going to be activated. Then you activate the zone 2. That is for the cross zoning. It will also activate the NAC2. This is it. Then after 30 seconds, if there is no abort switch, this abort switch is not activated, the system is going to release. Now, this system's abort switch works to hold on 10 seconds only. So in case you press and hold, it will just reduce, it will just count down up to 10 seconds and it will hold on 10 seconds. So after the 10 seconds, when you remove your hand, it will just continue from 10, 9, 8, up to 1 before it releases. And through that, in case it's false alarm, you can just abort the system by resetting the system and it's going to help. But this system, how it works, in case you want to do anything to this panel, you cannot be press, you can just press, but it's not going to act, do anything. Yeah. Mainly, if you want to use this, it's supposed to be accessible. You need to access it to the. Lamp test can be done in the first without any access but when you want to access you access by putting the key then you see this here the symbol here that is when you can activate any other thing you can just silence or you can do anything okay now the overview of it now also it comes with two batteries 12 volts 12 volts which is connected together to give 24 volts to supply a backup power this backup power is needed in case there is power outage. This is it, the spare unit, in case it goes off. This is supplying 240 volts. And it's, the 240 volts is being reduced by a transformer, turned down by a transformer to 24 volts. And that is what the panel is using now. Okay. So in case there is power outage, then we are going to use the back, backup power. Yeah. 
So, the alarm interface. The first stage alarm. Whenever there is an activation for the first stage, it's going to send signal to the first stage signal. Then this will be sent to the fire alarm panel. So that anybody who is not here would know whatever that is happening here. The same comprises of the second. Whenever you activate the second, the cross zone in second zone, it's going to activate the second stage alarm, which is going to send signal. Anytime also, you remove any cable or you do anything that is related to travel, of which is going to give a general trouble here, it's going to be activated through the trouble relay and it's going to send signal to the fire alarm panel. So that if anybody is not here, you would know whatever that is happening here. Then the person can just rush here and just do the needful. Okay, so somebody will also ask what is the meaning of the man release? This one, man release, it's here. Now, this is the man release. Okay, you can just activate it by opening it, and as the inscription says, you pull it down. Pulling it down, second. Pulling it down will just take zero seconds to just release the cylinder. You understand? Yes. Okay, then, um, what else have we to be talked about? The zone trade is applicable for any other, in case you have a zone trade that you want to put. It's also for the detectors also as well, but mostly we don't use it. And the extinguishing is whenever there is activation of the cross zoning and the upboard switch is not being pressed for 30 seconds as the system has been set for 30 seconds. Then after the 30 seconds, the extinguishion will be activated. That is when it's going to supply 24 volts to this system. Then anything that is connected to the extinguishing will just activate. So let's take for instance, now this one we are using Novec and the Novec comes with the solenoid. So the solenoid is going to be activated like that. Um, and also, that is it. And this is release pressure switch. In case you have a pressure switch, uh, that will just be, pressure switch applies mainly on the cylinder side so that in case somebody mistakenly or manually presses the solenoid there is a manual release manual a mechanical release on the solenoid of which i'm going to show you later on in case we need that we will just connect that one to that then if somebody presses it without the knowledge it will just activate this one so that it will send a signal to the fire alarm panel so they will know or it will send also signal to the panel so that we are going to know that there has been something that is happening there and when you come here we have these signals in case you remove the power supply you are going to have a trouble like this a trouble that's called the mains field and whenever the battery there is no battery i remove the battery now i'm going to receive this signal that is the battery field the CPU trouble is when there is not better communication in the system. That is when it's going to give you a CPU trouble. And it's very difficult resetting the CPU trouble. So mainly what you can do now is you need to remove all the power supply. That is the AC power and the DC power. You need to remove it. And also this is the auxiliary 24 volt trouble. In case you just short it, it will just give a signal. Whenever your battery is low, we need 24 volts. So anytime that your battery will go like 20, 18, they're about together, you are going to receive the signal of battery low. And we have the communication trouble, we have the edge trouble. The edge trouble is when there is shot to the egg, to the ground. You are going to have this trouble. And this trouble also, how to solve it in the next video also, we are going to talk about how to just solve problems like that and the system fuse trouble whenever you remove the fuse the knock trouble whenever there is an open circuit in the knock one and this one knock two and this one knock three and extinguishing trouble whenever there is an open circuit open trouble or there is trouble in the system in the extinguishing that is where it's going to show the abort trouble also the same the manual release the same the mode trouble release low pressure and so on and so forth. The processor reset is when you're going to you want to reset the panel. And the write enable 
is when you want to program the system of which in the next video also we're going to talk about how to program the system so it's not difficult whenever you are troubleshooting panels like this because all the troubles that you will want to know you will just find it just there so in case you just come to the panel then you see that the light here on the NAC trouble is activated definitely you're going to know that the trouble is coming from the NAC1 that is the pair so you go straight there then you try to tackle it yeah like that so it's so easy working on panels like this and um, the about the extinguishing trouble and all it's just the same thing it's very easy so let me know in the comments below in case you have any question anything and I'll just be willing and to just so we can just talk about this one also we have here the power trouble the power trouble comes it will just light on whenever there is there is power failure the fire whenever there is an activation of fire it will be shown the delay on whenever there is a delay when we make settings on delay or when there is countdown the delay will be shown the test mode on whenever you switch on to the test mode this light is going to be shown general disablement in case i disable any of the system any of the zones it's going to be shown here power trouble i discussed before i said before the NAC trouble whenever there is a trouble in the NAC one NAC two NAC three it's going to be shown here general trouble is just general trouble anytime there is any of the troubles it comes on to the general trouble it's shown and the system trouble is also the system's trouble alarm silenced in case there is any alarm then you want to silence it you just press the you just activate the access then you press the silencing of the alarm and you can also silence the buzzer also so that is when the thing uh, the alarm silence is going to be shown now whenever there is activation of the first zone the inscription that is going to show here is this one there will be a red light blinking in the zone one that means zone one detector has been activated but when i press silence it's going to be steady it means it has been silenced so applies to the zone 2 also as well zone 2 also is going to give the same signal with red light blinking and zone 3 with red light blinking now this is the trouble signal in case there is any trouble in case there is any trouble in zone 1 it's going to be shown here so when you come to the panel then you see that there is a yellow blinking light here that means the trouble is coming from zone 1 and here it's coming from zone 2 and here it's coming from zone 3 now here also is the extinguisher whenever there is an extinguisher like let's say the cross zoning is being done or manual release is being pressed this is the last thing that you're going to see you see that the lights are oh, it's being switched on as red manual release when you use the manual release whether you use this or that one then you're going to see it's activated the first stage output the first stage output whenever the fire alarm you want to see that the first stage this has been activated it's going to be shown here the second stage the extractor fan on this is extinguishing whenever it's being released that is here is where it's going to be shown the first stage the about the releasing trouble and this key switch it's just the same thing the key switch here it's the same thing for this one so you can switch it on to the manual only or you can use auto and manual and this is the low pressure switch also in case there is any low pressure the signal is going to be shown here like that so thank you Bye-bye.